This time, we're going to look at setting the control signals for a jump instruction. Our jump instruction is the simplest in terms of hardware, and it actually has the fewest interesting control signals to set. Since all we really want to do is take our pseudo direct address out of our instruction memory and expand it, then send it back to the program counter, the only thing we're really interested in setting is the jump control signal. That will tell the jump multiplexer to just send whatever comes in on that jump target address back to the program counter. We still have to set the other control signals though. We don't want to write anything to our registers because we're doing a jump instruction. It doesn't calculate anything. So I'll set that signal to zero. I'm not reading anything out of memory. I'm not writing anything to memory. But now I've got four more signals. You might be thinking that we need to set our branch multiplexer to zero because we don't want to do a branch, but really it doesn't matter what we set that one to. Whatever comes out of our branch multiplexer is sent in on the zero line to the jump multiplexer, but we're taking the jump target address from the one line on the jump multiplexer. So it actually doesn't matter what, so it doesn't actually matter what comes in from the branch multiplexer. We're just going to ignore it anyway. Similarly, it doesn't actually matter what the ALU gets for inputs because we're not going to use those. We don't really care what the mem to reg multiplexer sends back to the registers because we're still not going to write anything to the registers. And it also doesn't matter what register it selects to potentially update because we're just not going to change it. So there are the control signals for a jump instruction. We have four signals that we just don't care about, three that are specifically disabled, and then we do assert the jump signal. 